Good morning. And welcome to the season of Advent. Today marks our first Sunday in Advent. And let's all take a moment to place ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Our songs today can be found in our online worship booklet. Please note the links in our comments section. We have the Give link, which Bonnie will talk more about, and also our online worship booklet. And our opening song this morning is Christ Be Our Light, found in your online worship booklet. And as you are able, please rise and greet those around you as we process forth. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to, to God, God forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Almighty God, you know all our thoughts and desires. There is nothing we can hide from you. Enter our hearts today and by your Holy Spirit, help us to truly love you as we glorify your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Lord God, we light this candle to thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. We who have sat in darkness have seen a great light, the light of Jesus Christ, our salvation. We give you thanks and praise you for Jesus' name because he lives and reigns with you in your glory and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And our praise hymn this morning is in your online worship booklet, number 679, if you're reading from the blue hymnal, Surely It Is God Who Saves Me. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not dis expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, 
and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is portions of Psalm 80, and your response is, Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore, Restore us, us, O God, God of hosts. Show, show the, the light, light of, of your countenance, countenance and, and we shall, shall be saved. saved. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, be, Thanks to God. be to God. And our hymn before the gospel is in your worship booklet. 
O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, found in your online worship booklet. And as you are able, please rise for the gospel. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, to Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes t tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that hour or day, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to you all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy Advent, friends. We might also say Happy New Year for all of those of you who have been hoping for an end to 2020. 
I can tell you that at least in the church year, 2020 is over. We are at a new year today. Our scriptures this morning uh, are very appropriate for Advent. Um, Advent was a season where we, for centuries, remembered both apocalyptic longing and apocalyptic promise. Apocalyptic being that kind of sense of the end of time when Jesus comes again. Of course, in the Old Testament reading, Isaiah, it was a call for God to tear open the heavens and come down. It was an apocalyptic longing. Apocalypse simply means a revealing. And I wonder, for those of you who are stuck at home, I know there's some in our congregation now who are struggling with COVID. For those of you, perhaps, who are struggling with not enough work, or with children at home, that can almost be apocalyptic sometimes. Um, struggling with loneliness, isolation, illness, and if we look broader into the world, those who are food insecure, homeless, fires, hurricanes, unemployment, so many sick and dying from COVID, we may find ourselves in a time of great longing. And I wonder if we, like the people in the time of Isaiah, might look towards the heavens and say, Lord God, come down, tear open the heavens and visit us. Those who lived through exile would remember that the time before exile, they had somewhat forgotten about their relationship with God. They were caring about doing their own things, busy with life, working, living, gathering up an income, filling up their storehouses, and not really remembering their relationship with God. Then came that terrible time of exile where they remembered their loneliness for God and they sought repentance. Our scripture this morning is actually written after the return from exile when after they had received the promise that they could go home, imagine that for a minute for our lives, after you receive the promise that we can gather together again in our homes, in our places of worship, in all of the places that we enjoyed, they realized that life was still hard. In fact, they were back in the Holy Land building a temple, but they discovered that there was so much that they still needed from God so much that they lacked. And so the experience of exile had brought them into a place of longing. I wonder if for us, we find ourselves in similar places. Now perhaps we sit in exile, but have we found the loneliness for God, the longing for God that helps to bring us into our next time, which promises to bring its own troubles? We're in this time now, which is quite difficult, but life is always difficult, and our time after exile will bring its own troubles. Our invitation in the season of Advent is that season of waiting and longing to draw closer to God. The God who, although we might call for some sort of apocalyptic revealing, just like the people in Isaiah did and like Jesus spoke of, usually comes in the quiet places. It's almost like God snuck into the world in the baby Jesus so that very few would notice. And of course, perhaps God still sneaks into the world. And this is what Jesus is calling us to do, to be awake to those moments when God is tiptoeing into our presence, whispering into our heartache and our loneliness. David Luce says, at the heart of the Christian story is the promise that God not only came in the small, vulnerable form of a baby born poor and frightened parents, but that God comes in small, vulnerable, unexpected, and unlooked for ways even now. This is the apocalyptic revealing. In fact, each time we reach out to one another in love, God is once again invading, he writes, the kingdoms and structures of this world with God's radical and transforming presence and grace. 
the difference between recognizing that radical and transformative presence and grace in our lives is a matter of how awake we want to be, how much we want to long for God. Our opening hymn this morning, I'm going to grab it and reread it to you, and you can pull it up too, Christ Be Our Light, speaks to that longing. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. This is the season of invitation, of turning toward God. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. And a reminder that those who are longing out in the world long for much more than we can imagine sometimes. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope. Many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are fed. It goes on to speak of longing for shelter and speaking of our many gifts, which our scripture from Corinthians speaks to too. As much as we may feel unequal to the challenges of our day, the writing in Corinthians promises us that we do, in fact, have the gifts that are needed for this time. All we need to do is turn ourselves over to the love and care of our Lord God and to remember that God is our God. Allow ourselves to fall into that longing for the presence of God in our lives. And so as we tiptoe into Advent, just as God tiptoes into our lives, I believe our scriptures this morning are inviting us into that very longing. How long has it been since you have hungered and thirsted for God's presence in your life? How long has it been since you felt like you needed God's presence in your life? Throw yourself into that love and longing and awaken to God's presence in our lives. I will end with some thoughts from Steve Garnis Holmes today as we enter into this season of Advent. How do we name our heartbreak, our lack? This is the affliction that silts our veins, that we do not know what we want, but we want it badly. Sandbags of darkness rise about us, and with the night are wanting. The door to the locked attic room in our hearts that we have ignored for too long swings open, and its great emptiness reaches for us. This is the season we marry our longing. Nothing will do now but divine intervention. Yet not in the heavens, but somehow in the mystery the prophets have hinted at among us. The empty place is the place of God. O humanity, set the table and keep the fire going. But before you set out either to hope or to rectify, your faithfulness, faithfulness now is to attend to the great, holy fullness of the emptiness in your own heart and be still. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with all. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For For our our sake, sake, he was was crucified crucified under Pontius Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He He suffered suffered death and was buried. On the third third day, day, he rose again again, in in accordance with the scriptures. He He ascended into into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will will come come again again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, come soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness, Come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. O God of comfort, for all your people far and near, especially for those in any need or trouble whom we lift up to you now, I invite your prayers for those whom you love and those who need God's love. We will respond here to each prayer. Lord Jesus, come soon. for prayers for Tara and her five kids who lost a husband or dad the day after Thanksgiving due to COVID. Lord Jesus, come Come soon. soon. Diane asks for prayers for Linda and Jim Osborne. Lord Jesus, Jesus, come soon. soon. For, For Mackie, for the repose of a young soul. Be with his mother and father during this trying time. Lord Jesus, come soon. Catherine asks for prayers for Susan, who is very ill with COVID. She is getting better, but is frightened. Lord Jesus, come soon. Linda asks for prayers for Ron's brother, Randy, the Osbournes, Ashley, and Charisma. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. soon. Tina asks for prayers for those who are struggling with loneliness. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. soon. Linda 
asks for prayers for Jim's continued healing. Also prayers for my sister and family who lost their, her husband and their father yesterday. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus come, come soon. soon. Laura asks for prayers for her dear friend, Jennifer Keen Small and her family. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come, soon. come soon. Sunday after battling pancreatic cancer. Lord Jesus, Jesus come, come soon. soon. for prayer for all who are struggling physically, financially, mentally, and spiritually. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come soon. Diane asks for prayers for Mark's foot to heal. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come, come soon. soon. Mary asks for prayers for their friend Chuck is feeling despair and anger. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come, come soon. soon. Jesus, come soon. Leanne asks for prayers for Jesse, who is on hospice. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus come, come soon. soon. continue to pray this morning, I invite your prayers of gratitude. What gifts has God given you today? for 
her prayers for repose of soul for her cousin, Irene Olson. Lord Jesus, come soon. sunshine, kind souls, and sharing. Joyce is grateful for the St. George Pastoral Care Team. Scotty gives thanksgiving for vaccines and development and for all who are working to bring them to us. Linda is thankful for all the prayers from her church family and for our healing. Lifting up all of our prayers, those spoken and unspoken and those for which we have not yet found words, we pray. Lord, when you come, you will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Lord, bring, bring new life, life where, where we, we are worn and, and tired, new, new love, love where, where we, we have turned hard-hearted, Forgiveness, where, where we, we feel hurt, hurt and where, and where we, have we have wounded, wounded others. others. And the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit, where we are prisoners of ourselves. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace be with you. God, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice unto God. And as the table is being prepared, please join me in singing in your online worship booklet, I Has Not Seen. Found in your online worship booklet, I Has Not Seen.
prayers this morning continue with the prayers at the ministry of the table and there is a response which I hope that you will say loudly from home this is our song Hosanna in the highest throughout the prayer the Lord be with you and, and also, also with you. you lift up your hearts we, we lift, lift them to, to the Lord. Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is, it right, is right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise, praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned toward your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where the angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. In the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This, this is, is our, our song. song. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, in the highest. highest. The crowds came out to see your son, and yet at the end, they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This, this is, is our, our song, Hosanna, Hosanna in the, the highest. highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup and said, this is my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is our story. This, this is, is our song, Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. Therefore, gracious God, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. 
defying death. He rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This, this is, is our, our song. song. Hosanna, Hosanna in, the in the highest. Send your spirit on us now and on this bread and wine that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all those who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing, Blessing and, and honor, honor and glory and, and power be yours, be yours forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ gave himself for us and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. And our song as we press us in communion is in your worship booklet as one unknown found in your online worship booklet.
even though we have been apart today, we have together broken open the bread and shared the cup of suffering with Jesus. Let us pray the post-communion prayer together. God of abundance, you, you have, have fed us with, with the bread, bread of life and, and cup of salvation. salvation. You, have you have made us, us with Christ and, and one another, and you and have, have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now, now send, send us forth in the power, power of your spirit that we, that may, we may proclaim your redeeming, redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. I know of at least three birthdays to celebrate this week. Victor Hayes, Caitlin Apple, and John Choco are all celebrating birthdays. Ronalyn and John Choco are also celebrating an anniversary. So let us pray for them. Holy God, we praise and thank you for each of these, your children, our family. We pray that you would continue the good work that you have begun in them, bringing blessings into their lives, that they may be a blessing in the lives of those whom they meet. And for Ronalyn and John, we pray for continued love, filling their chalice with love overflowing, that their lives together may be a sacramental sign of Christ's love to the world. And family of God, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love, both the living and the dead, this day, this night, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And the hymn to send us forth is in your online worship booklet, Be Thou My Vision, found in your online worship booklet. worship has ended, our service has just begun. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.